Let me introduce you to my Warco drill press. But could it be improved? back to the workshop. So in the last video we made that ball nut bracket down there, that big block that connects the ball screw to the table. And in this video we need to make the plate that goes on the front here. So that'll pick up off these holes here and the ones at the top there. And there's two right at the top there. And then it will drill and tap into this uh, frame as well. And then that's where the linear rails will go. So we're over at the CNC machine now and we've got the stock clamped down. We've got our spoil board in. It's just a little bit of chipboard. I think it'd be fine for this. And we're just holding the stock down with these two clamps because what we're going to do is come in and drill a couple of strategic holes and then we'll, we'll screw this uh, plate down onto here through those holes. Then we can take these clamps out of the way and we can do the rest of the machining. So in terms of the operations, this is the part we're trying to make. So it's got a couple of main features in it really. We've just got the pocket here which that ball nut sticks out through that, that connects it to the, uh, the knee that's going to move up and down with the XY table on it. Uh, there's a couple of other holes in here that uh, allow it to be bolted onto the, the clamps that go across the column. And then down the outside there's two sets of holes. Um, the sets that are every 60mm, they're going to be tapped M5, they're to hold the linear rails on. But underneath those you've got um, well, you've got a pair of grub screws, so they're, I'll just zoom in there. You've got grub screws either side of a countersink screw, so that will be countersunk below the surface so the rail will sit flush. Um, and then the idea is that clamps this plate down onto the those box sections, but the little grub screws give you some leveling. So you've got leveling all the way down to bring this plate into line, so it's all in line with the uh, with the quill. So that's kind of it really. So we'll just spot a few of these holes out, clamp it down, and then we can machine out this pocket here, and then we'll screw it down in a few more places, uh, machine these out, and then machine the profile. So let's get going. Thank you. 
Okay, we've made good progress so far. So we've got the slot machined out, got all the holes drilled and they're all tapped. Uh, so, and we've got clearance holes as well. So we've got M8, we've got M5 tapped holes here, uh, clearance holes here. Uh, so the bit we just got left to do is to get the countersinks into here. Now the screw looks like this. Uh, it's a M8 countersink screw, and the idea is that that will go into there and it will sit flush or under flush. Um, so just below the surface, so when we put the rail on, it doesn't interfere with it. So obviously we've got to cut that little countersink shape. So usually the way I do it is with this sort of countersink bit like this but in a you know either in a lathe or a drill press or some kind of machine so you're holding this rigid because the problem is if you if you use these freehand in a cordless drill and i was just trying it out again you might be able to see down there that they go a little bit kind of rosette shaped because because they're in the cordless drill and you hold it in your hand they kind of bump around a bit and as each one digs in and starts to cut uh, it just has a variable pressure so you end up with it not being completely round because this isn't rigid so I don't really want that because it won't sit nicely. Now the other type we've got um, is this type of snail countersink, but really they're only good for just taking the edge off. They don't really go down very far, so they're not really an option either. And the third way to do it would be to interpolate it using a ball nose end mill like that, and then uh, use a 3D adaptive or some 3D toolpath to basically kind of carve your way out uh, using one of the toolpaths there, scallop or some kind of 3D adaptive. Um, I experimented a little bit with that in Fusion, but it takes quite a long time to do each one and I've got 12 in total to do. So it's going to be quite um, quite a task to do it with that. Also, um, I mean, you could have spent a little bit longer on it, but you always ended up with a little bit of a kind of stepped edge as you went all the way down. I guess if you spent enough time on the cam, you could get that really nice, but I've got 12 to do. so wasn't really that keen on that option. So I think what I'm going to do is, um, this is the perfect size for that, that's a 16.5mm countersink, so that's perfect to, to get that countersink on the end of there. Uh, this is a 10mm shaft, and now this is an ER11 collet, that's, so the maximum size I can get is 6mm in there, so clearly that's not going to go in there. So what I'm going to experiment with, I've never tried this before, but what I'm going to do is make an adapter, just a steel adapter with a 6mm shaft and a kind of a sleeve on this side, like an end mill holder with two set screws to pick up off that shank there. And we'll try doing it just by hand in the CNC machine by coming over the hole and just gently going in. Now there's no real torque on this machine, so we'll see how we get on. It might struggle. But um, at least it'll hold it rigid and hopefully it'll get a good finish. So we'll just go to the lathe. I'll make an adapter and I'll be back in a minute. Something a bit like this. I've just turned this adapter on the lathe. So this is just uh, mild steel. So it's 6mm shaft at that end just to go into the you know, 11 6mm collet. And then I bored and reamed this end 10mm just to take the, the shank there of the countersink. Two M5 set screws just lock it in place. And we'll see how we get on. So I've never tried this before. We'll uh, get it over the hole and then just manually jog down, listen to what it sounds like and have a look at it, plenty of cutting oil. And we'll just keep the RPM as high as we can for the spindle, but not too high so we don't burn this up. Well, wish me luck, here we go.
Right, so I finally got all 12 counter sinks done. As you can see, that wasn't a whole heap of fun. Uh, that is a high speed spindle. It doesn't like running at low speed. There's no torque. And the problem is to uh, to run a bit like this, you need pretty low speed, otherwise you just burn it up. So I was having to juggle manually on the, on the down feed and just trying to keep it from stalling, but not allowing it to run too fast. Yeah, so it's not really set up for this. You want a you know, proper mill, low speed, uh, drill press. And yeah, if I had a drill press would be good. <laughs> if I had a working one. Right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to swap out to this uh, 6mm end mill and just going to put a 6mm hole down the centre of each of these and then on the lathe I'm going to turn down an insert like a drill guide insert so we can drop that in and that will pick up off that bore and then we can drill through the centre and accurately drill through the holes into the frame that it's going to go into to make sure we've got very accurately located threads because these counter sinks don't allow any tolerance you know they, they've got to be right in line so let's get this set up take those out and then I think we're done so we'll take it off clean it up and I'll see you back at the bench Okay, and after a quick deburr of all the edges and then opening up all the threads, just cleaning those out, we've got our finished part. So let's offer it up to the machine and hope it fits. Okay, let's get a fixing in the top to hold it. I'll just keep it loose for now. middle one then we've got these lower two down here yeah it looks good I'll just put these in loose for now just to see what we've got what's it going in oh, yeah. Relieved to see that it actually fits because obviously a lot of time invested and not to say money in this plate. It'd be annoying to have to cut it again. Okay, just leave it loose for now. Okay, looks like it's going to fit there, fits down the side, down there. Clearance of that ball nut, yeah, there's plenty. Lines up there. Okay. Okay, but now we've got the back plate mounted, we're just going to run a few checks just to see how square we are to the axis of the, the quill motion here. And then if I think it's out by too much, I've got the option of putting some shims behind these bolt heads on the back of the plate, just sort of bring it in line or kick it out this way or at the bottom. Now, be under no illusion, this is not a milling machine. We're not going to get it to within 0.01 or anything like that. We just want to try and get it as close as possible. There's going to be, you know, run out on the chuck here. Uh, there's going to be um, probably still some free movement in the quill, although hopefully with the bearing guide system at the top, that will minimise that. You know, we're not shooting for stupid tolerances here. We're just trying to get it as close as we can with, within reason without spending too much time on it. And so what I've done here, I've just swept around. In fact, let's just move it again. I'm just going to move the pulley. Just sweeping for the high spot here, which is somewhere, somewhere about there. And then I'm going to hold the pulley just to make sure this doesn't move. And then we'll try and move the quill up and down. Now, it doesn't move. It's not the smoothest of quills. It's just moving in a... In a ball there. Let's just see roughly where we are and whether we need to shim it. So just even the action of just starting to apply the motions moved it a bit. I think we 
got a stroke of about 80 millimeters on this quill, so. changing directions enough for it to move. It's obviously still a little bit free play in it. Okay, so we checked that uh, this back plate is reasonably in line with the quill in this sense. So now we're just gonna check the other axis here. So I've, basically what I'm just trying to do is make sure before I drill the holes that mount the rail to the, uh, the box sections on the side, make sure I've got enough room to make some adjustments so they're in about the right place. And if I haven't, then I'm gonna need to move this back plate um, sort of around this angle to make sure I've got enough adjustment on the rail. So I've got something set up here, so I've got this indicator uh, in the chuck and that's going to slide down the side of this reference face on the block. And then we're just going to tap the rail around and see if we can get this reasonably in line. Just make sure, as I say, we've got enough adjustment range um, in the clearance for these and if I haven't then I'm going to have to move the plate. Now to set this up, uh, as you can see there, I've got a very complicated arrangement just to lock the quill rotation, otherwise uh, this isn't going to work. So I haven't got any other means to do it, but that's working. And then I've just got this piece of wood just chopped in the pulley at the top there to try and help as well. Now I'm not really sure how successful this is going to be because it's just a quill in a drill press, so there's probably going to be some movement in the ball that's going to affect the reading there. This isn't the stiffest setup in the world, um, but we'll give it a go. That's all we've got. And we'll, again, we're just going to check we've got enough range when we finally come to put this together before I drill the holes in the side. So, we've got that lined up on there. I've taken all the free play out and we've got some load on it. Okay, let's see what happens. So we're currently on, what, 55? It's probably going to jump yet. It's jumping around a little bit. I think it's just the smoothness of the quill in the bore rather than that. That looks ground. See if we can tap it back in. Oh, the other way then. Yeah, this quill is never going to be a precision instrument. It's interesting when you usually try to dial a machine into one division. This is never going to be that. Oh, come off the end. adjustment at the bottom. Not much at the top. So clearly there's a little bit more work to do and really we're just measuring uh, the smoothness of the um, quill inside the bore there which is just pretty rough enough. So when we get these bearings at the top here and the quill support that should be a lot better. But the, the purpose of that test was just to make sure we got the plate in about the right place and we drill these holes. Um, when we put the rail on here we just got a little bit of adjustment and we're, we're close enough so we can dial it in and I think we can from that. So. Let's go ahead and start drilling these holes. So when we were on the CNC machine, you might remember when we did the countersinks, I ran a six millimeter two flute end mill through that hole, just so we had a six millimeter diameter hole. And then on the lathe, I've just turned up this little uh, drill guide. So it's just got a six millimeter stubs or shaft at the bottom. Then our two holes there allow us to screw it into there. And then I've drilled and reamed that three millimeters in the center there. 
So we should. Oh, I've also made. Um, this only sticks out. I think it's a six millimeter plate. This so sticks out 5.95, just to make sure it doesn't bottom out, but it still catches on that edge. So the idea is we want a very centered hole because these countersinks have got no torrents on them. There's no forgiveness. They need to be dead in line so we can get everything lined up. Otherwise, we'll just pull the plate out of the way. Uh, and while we're here, we'll just talk about the fixing method. So the idea is we're going to tap into there and then we'll use grub screws in these two sides to bring this into level because we've got to bring this plate level um, in line with the chuck axis in two different directions. So let's see if this little adapter works. So I've just got these little M5 button heads. Just put a washer on there because they're a little bit long and um, I can't bother to cut them down. This will be fine. It's just to uh, hold the guide in place. So obviously it centralised itself on that 6mm bore that I put in. Right. So now in theory, if we drill through there, we should get our three millimeter hole in here and then we can take this off and open them out to 6.8 and tap M8. Now I was gonna harden this, but I didn't have any, this is only mild steel, low carbon steel. I didn't have any uh, bright or high carbon steel that was a large enough diameter. So we've only got 12 of these to do. I think it will be okay, it should hold up. All right, we've got a brand new three millimeter twist drill in here. So hopefully it should be easy going. And sometime later, after all that drilling, they're all done. So they've all been drilled out three millimeters, pretty much in the center. So that the uh, little fixture I made, the little drill guide I made, uh, worked pretty well. And then you might notice this one looks a little bit different. So this one here, I've done a little uh, practice hole just to make sure it's all gonna work. So I took this out six millimeters using this six millimeter twist drill and then opened it out to 6.8, which is the tapping size for M8. Um, I tend to, um, rather than use these drills, the tapping drills to bore the hole, I tend to use another drill and then just use this to take the bare minimum out, just to keep it as sharp as possible for as long as possible. So that was the 6.8 tapping, and then went in with the M8 tap, use this little fixture just to keep it nice and square tap that out to M8 and then of course you're left with a little bit just as a little bit of the aluminium on here which I needed to open up so I went in with this 8mm twist drill just to take the aluminium away and then just when it started to bite into the steel and put a little um, sort of countersink in it I guess and that's when I stopped and then I'll tap that M8 and then we can try our little Counting screw now it's a little bit long but uh, just to make sure it's all going to work and go in quite nicely so there we have it so I've just got another one two three four five eleven to do I'll bring you back in a minute Twelve holes are done, so we've drilled them out, threaded them, and then I just uh, just cleaned up this chamfer around the edge here, just to make sure there was no burr there at all. Because when I put the rails on, it needs to sit absolutely flush. So they're all done at the bottom, and all the way to the top. So we've got twelve of them in total, yeah, right up to there. Okay, last one. And on this side, it really curves away. It's worse than the other side on this box section. So again, just lightly snug that up. So it's touching. And somewhere there. Okay, with all 12 screws in, that's what we have so far. Okay, hold on, change of plan. Um, now, I was just having a look at the access to this. Uh, which obviously with the main plate on it would be somewhere around the back here and I couldn't even see a little screw, M4 screw to get the Allen key in. I can just about see it there but I've got 
almost no movement back here and then in that one in the corner well yeah it's not really going to happen also um, I need access to tighten this nut up uh, when, when I get the final installation because I need to be able to align this once I've got the XY table on I need to have this loose for now get it all aligned and then tighten these up at the top and the bottom so I need to have access to that when the plate is in place and the original plan was to get access around the back here and even with ball ended um, Allen keys you just not really gonna work so the new plan is I'm just gonna cut a window in here with probably a little recess on it a little um, yeah I'll leave a bit of material down each side then I can make a little piece that fits back in there with a couple of screws so basically an access panel so I've got that set up on the CNC machine so let's go and cut that out and then uh, we can put it back on and proceed Okay, so we're back over at the CNC machine and you might notice these little blocks on here. So what I did before I took it off, I lined up each of these with those edges there just in case I needed to bring it back and uh, do any more operations on it, which is a good tip if you're machining. Just leave some fixtures on there until you definitely know the part's done. Uh, and that meant I was able just to drop it back on and it's picked up off all those edges. I've just done a quick check and it's going to machine that pocket exactly where I want it. So I've got the uh, code loaded up. Uh, let's machine it out. Is complete so just deburred around the edges so now we've got our little access port so we'll get this fitted up make sure it fits properly on the machine and then a little time later probably in a future video I'll make the actual uh, hatch that goes in there and then just put two little M5 screws in these top and bottom pieces here so there we go right let's put it back on again also I had a look through my drill box and uh, yeah I had a bit just right so I've just got these on a really low torque setting. That's a lot quicker. I'll just leave those loose for now because I want the countersinks to uh, dictate exactly where the plate goes because we know that's that was in good alignment with the quilt. There we have it, it's uh, looking pretty good now. Yeah, now I've got access to adjust the ball screw. I can get that aligned properly. I can adjust the mesh if I need to. Yeah, looks good. Yeah, I think that was a good move. Okay, and the plate is now on and you'll see I've put the digital readout back on again. I just took that off temporarily just to make sure I didn't knock it. Well, that's back in place. Yeah, so I think the access port was a really good idea. It gives me access to align it when I put the table on and get the ball screw aligned. If I need any maintenance, like a little bit of greasing from time to time, or just open it up just to check the gears are okay, I can do that. So I think that was a really good move. And here it is, is the rest of the plate. OK, 
Okay, so I haven't got the grub screws in yet. I've just got it lightly uh, screwed in place just so I don't distort the plate. I don't want to pull it back onto the box section. So we'll do that another time, we'll get it leveled in. So I think what I need to do next is to make the XY table, or the knee, I guess you might call it. And then we can get the rails on and get the alignment sorted out there and make sure it's definitely in line with the quill. Uh, we also need to make the quill guide piece because as you saw before, it runs a bit rough in that bore. You can't really dial it into that yet. But once it runs back relative to the rails and they hold it in a certain axis, which I've got to dial in as well, I think I can then set it all up properly. I think also next time we'll have a look at the um, brake system. So there's a box section that goes on here, 30 by 30, and it bolts into these two fixings here. And then I'm going to machine a slot in the front face, and then there'll be a T-nut that runs behind the back. And the idea is that the table that runs up and down just lightly rubs against that surface. And then on the front here, there'll be uh, something a bit like this. Uh, so we call these Bristol handles, but essentially they're indexable handles, so you can press that, put it round to whatever position you want, and it locks back onto a spline, and then you can turn it. So if you're in a tight space, which you will be, or you might be in here, you, you might not be able to do a full turn, you can turn it and then bring it back, turn like that, kind of index it round, and that will go through the XY table, uh, through that slot, and into a T-nut in the back, so essentially just lock the table off and stop it moving down. Uh, when you apply the load from the drill, so sort of lock it in place. So we'll have a look at that next time. Okay, I think that's it for this video. Thank you very much for following along. It's good to have your comments as well, so if you've got any comments for this video, please leave those down below. I do read them all. It's good to hear what you have to say. Uh, particularly if you've got any good ways of doing countersinks freehand, or you've, you've come up with a good fixture that doesn't leave ridges. Obviously, if you've got a drill press or a pillar drill or a, see, a milling machine, then that's nice and rigid, and that's fine. But if there's a way you can do it freehand, or if perhaps you've had good experience with a CNC interpolated toolpath of some kind, let me know. Good to hear. Uh, otherwise, thank you for watching, and see you next time.